in the last class uh, we have talked about uh, the different regions operations for mos devices we have discussed nmos pmos separately and you know that there are two different regions operations one is the triad region where uh, you can use the mos as a register variable register depending upon the applied voltage uh, you can also control the uh, corresponding resistance value okay and in the saturation region what we are doing is in the saturation region we are uh, using the mos as as a current source and gradually see that whenever we are going to employ mos as an amplifying device we will use the mos or we will operate the mos in the in the saturation region the current is constant if i just neglect the channel modulation for the time being the current is constant with respect to the value of vds uh, that means even if you change the value of vds for a given vgs you have a constant current if you change the value of vgs then you have an another constant current okay and the expression was something like that half mu and cox w over l vgs minus vth whole square if i just neglect the channel length modulation if i incorporate channel length modulation then it will be 1 plus lambda vds so that part will be there right so now whenever we are using the mos as an amplifying device So you know that you have to apply some small signal, some time varying signal. Suppose uh, I would like to apply some signal. Say, for example, it looks something like that. This is my input signal. Suppose this variation is say peak to peak. This is say two millivolt. Okay. I would like to have an amplified version of that. Might be inverted. but that should be amplified and suppose this variation say for example this is 10 millivolt so you have a gain of 5 might be inverted the phase might be reversed but you have an amplified version but remember from your knowledge in uh, uh, electronic circuits also that you cannot apply this particular input voltage alone in order to operate the device as an amplifying device or amplifying element you need to apply something else right and that is known as biasing okay so in this particular case you have two different types of signal one is the dc signal and the second one is the time varying signal so whenever we observe the behavior of this uh, amplifying circuit in presence of only the dc signal this is nothing but a dc analysis and in case we apply the small signal a time varying signal over and above this dc signal then it becomes the small signal analysis and as long as the circuit is a linear circuit you you understand what is meant by linear circuit that means the circuit which obeys the law of modulation Then the output, the overall output is nothing but the combination of the DC output as well as the small signal. Okay. So accordingly, we have to observe what should be the. So every time it is not possible for you to draw this uh, symbol and uh, analyze accordingly because in a particular circuit you might be having more than uh, one or two MOSs. Okay. even for a simple amplifier simple uh, say common source kind of amplifier we will discuss what is that common source later on then also you see that if you would like to incorporate each of these elements by means of mos you require at least two such mos device one for the amplifying part second one for the load part you have seen that in for for vjt amplifier what you have you have uh, some uh, a single resistance should be there at least one load resistance should be there in the form of rc apart from that you have other resistors for biasing purpose but remember here we should not use for an integrated circuit we should not use any discrete kind of elements even if you have some uh, current source even if you have some uh, say your resistor so that has to be implemented by means of mos so if you have one mos and another resistor the simplest model then also you require two such mos devices simple and big circuit and if you go for the complicated one you have so many mos devices in your particular circuit 
So therefore, our idea is to develop a model for that, for the MOS device, so that you can analyze it in a much better way, in a convenient way. As I've told you in the last class also, uh, MOS is basically a four-terminal device. You have gate, source, drain, and body or substrate or bulk. And as of now, since we have not discussed the, the second type of uh, your second order effect, we have discussed only one second order effect, that is the channel and modulation. There is another effect due to your uh, the potential difference between the substrate and, and the bulb, so, substrate and, and the source, or body and the source. So as of now, we will observe the MOS as a three terminal device. You have three terminals, gate, source, and train. Right, so here you have the gate terminal, here you have the source terminal, this one is the source, this one is the drain. These three terminals are present, and you understand that between gate to source, there is an isolation. There is an isolation, you don't have any, at least for the DC part, you don't have any current, because you have a silicon dioxide layer, insulator layer present in between the, the metal and the, and the substrate. But you have applied some voltage, so this voltage is the VGS. The applied voltage is VGS, Gate source voltage and this voltage is a DC voltage, say for example, for the time being. What you have between the drain and source? Between the drain and source, you have basically depending upon the applied voltage over here because MOS is acting as a current voltage controlled current source. So, depending upon the applied voltage between this gate and source, you have a, a current and that current kind of value is given by half mu and Cox W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. If I operate the device in the Saturation. If not, if it is used in the uh, your trial region, then it should be mu and C of W over L, VGS minus VTH into VDS minus half VDS. That expression. So as you change this VGS value accordingly, the corresponding value of this current source will also vary. So simplistically, in your uh, uh, large signal model or in the DC model, you can consider that okay, you have uh, basically uh, this only one element. Only one current source is there and you have some applied voltage between this gate and source. That is coming from the MOS itself. Okay, now let us have a look at the circuit, something like that. Suppose this is my circuit. I don't know whether this circuit will be, uh, whether it is capable of amplifying any, any signal or not. I am not sure about that. What I have, I have this, uh, MOS, uh, this uh, NMOS over here. Say for example, I have applied some small signal at the gate, source is grounded, and obviously uh, the drain current is flowing because of the application of the uh, voltage at the gate terminal. Some drain current will flow, and I have to allow the current to flow through a resistor. Now, for the timing, let us assume that you have a resistor, discrete resistor, RT. Gradually, you will see that this resistor is also replaced by some MOS devices. So simplistically, you require at least another register apart from this MOS, at least. Okay, but gradually we have to observe whether this circuit will work or not. And you are taking the output at the drain terminal, source is rounded. Okay, and you have applied some small signal. So this small signal you have applied, say a 5 millivolt peak, 0 to 5, 0 to minus 5, something like that. Now the question is that whether this circuit can be used as an amplifier or not. What do you feel? Okay, the input I have already mentioned. Input is like five millivolt uh, plus five to minus five. That is input. Special voltage. Is there is no DC. There is no DC. There is no DC. You, just, you just you just check over there. You just check over there. Yes. So once again, if you just observe this particular ID versus so it is mentioned that the threshold voltage is given by 0.5 volt, that is 500 millivolt. Threshold voltage is 0.5 volt. So once again, if you just observe the transfer characteristics, because ultimately MOS is a voltage controlled current source. In the saturation region, it's a voltage controlled current source. Right. So if you observe the ID versus VGS graph, how does it look like? Last week we have explained the variation of ID with respect to VGS. There was only lemma. It says that whenever your drain source voltage is greater than zero, the MOS device always turns on in saturation. So you have two expressions for current. One expression was something like that. You know this expression. One expression was ID is equal to 
mu and c of w over l vgs minus vtx vds minus half vtx square. The second expression was uh, half mu and c of w over l vgs minus vtx whole square. If I just forget about the channel and modulation for the time being. So as long as your applied vgs is less than the threshold voltage, there is no current. Device is off. Channel is not created. Right? Device is off. There is no current. Zero current. I am just neglecting substitutional conduction for the time being. So 0 to 0.5 volt, there is no current. V1.5, when the gate source just exceeds the threshold voltage, the overdrive voltage is just greater than 0. Isn't it? That is VTS minus VTH. That is overdrive voltage, which is just greater than 0. What about the drain source? Drain source is sufficiently large. For example, it is large. With respect to 0, it is large. Device turns on in saturation. saturation. So obviously this graph is something like that. It, it will follow the, the corresponding parabolic nature. Isn't it? Half mu and W over n, that's a constant part, multiplied with Vgs minus Vgs whole square. So y is equal to this current IV across this vertical uh, axis. So y is equal to some constant k into x minus a whole square. It's a parabola. Right? Now the thing is that your applied voltage is like, it's, it's riding on 0 dc. Say for example, it is riding on 0 dc. Might be, it, uh, I can also change it. Suppose the DC value is not equal to zero, some, some voltage, some non-zero voltage. But for the time being, let us assume that it is riding on zero DC. And if it is riding on zero DC, so in this particular IDVGS graph, when the input is at zero, you are over here. You are over here at this particular point, right? And then you are applying some voltage, something like that. This is the applied voltage. 5 millivolt, peak, plus 5, minus 5. What will be the scenario of this current? There is no current. Zero current. So this circuit will not work. This is for sure. This side will not work. Okay. So what change? I have to accommodate over here. Let us add some DC bias. Right? And suppose the corresponding DC bias that you are applying over here is equal to one threshold only. Is equal to one threshold only. Your threshold is equal to 0 0.54, that is 5, 500 millivolt, and you are applying this one threshold, this one. This one only. Okay. Had this been the case, then when the input is equal to zero, I mean the small signal is equal to zero, you are right over here and then you are applying this voltage. Okay, you are over here, five, uh, 500 millivolt and then you are applying this small signal, something like that. And let us assume that uh, I am having some uh, parameter over here like mu uh, and is equal to 100 microampere per whole square your W value ratio is equal to say 10 and threshold voltage already mentioned as 0 0.5 volt. So, you know that is the expression for the current ID is equal to half mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH whole square. And in the entire region of operation, the device will be there in the saturation. Because you know that that, that deviation with respect to uh, your uh, DC value, that deviation is smaller now, so that it's not that large. Your input signal is not that large, so that the device might uh, enter into the uh, triangle region. If VGS is very large, you, you know the corresponding formula now. If VOD, the overdrive voltage is greater than the drain source voltage, then the device enters into the triangle region. But I'm assuming that this gate source is not that large. It's just 5 millivolts, something like that. It will not enter into the saturation. It will not enter into the it will be there in the saturation region. Your VGS is equal to, I mean, uh, gate source voltage is nothing but, uh, gate source voltage is nothing but your threshold voltage, one threshold, plus this 5 millivolt. Plus 5 minus, plus minus 5 millivolt. Okay. So, what will be the maximum current value, ID max? The maximum current value is given by, so, what will be the, your, uh, ID max, that is half, mu and C of C, just plug in the values, 100, uh, 
then uh, WIL is like uh, 10, it's a uh, 100 microampere per volt square, so 10 to the minus 6, and over here, what you have, so that's why microampere is written over there, and uh, VGS minus VTA, so when VGS, when the input is at plus 5 millivolt, input small signal is at plus 5 millivolt, that is the maximum value of the current, that results in the maximum value of the current, what is the difference? This value between this value and the threshold voltage only 5 millivolt, right? So then it is nothing but 520 to the minus 3, and if you just calculate, it is coming out to be 12.5 nanoampere. 12.5, very insignificant current. 12.5 nanoampere. So your input was something like that, 5 millivolt. You would like to have a 50 millivolt output. Suppose the gain is 10, 50 millivolt output, and then the ID max when the input is at its peak, the ID max is given by 12.5 nanoampere. You have to ensure that this 12.5 nanoampere will give you 50 millivolt output voltage. Forget the DC, just the small signal addition, 50 millivolt output. So, had this been the case, sorry. Then what should be your RD value? 50 millivolt, 12.5 nano, that is 4 megaohms. Very large. Very large ID. Mu and CX is given 100. You cannot change. It's a technology dependent environment. You cannot change. For a given process, it's fixed. Last day I've told you that you can only play with the WIL, you can only play with the ID, you can only play with the gate source voltage. So these are the things that you can control from outside. Once the technology is fixed, then you cannot play with the mu and c also. You go to a different technology, then mu and c also can be modified. Okay. So then, it is coming out with 4 mega ohms, and there is another catch. The catch is that whenever, so you have put the, you have put this uh, DC point right over here. This is the DC point. And then you are applying this voltage, like this. Negative the negative half cycle, the device will not be operating. There is another means. Now my argue my input is something like that, only positive part is there. Then also, it is facing this particular challenge, 4 mega ohms. So what is the way out? The way out is that, last day I told you, that uh, ultimately the strength of the device is identified by the variation of its ID with respect to VGA, that means the GM. Transconductance. This transconductance will tell you how strong your device is. Right, because this particular parameter will convert the voltage variation to a current variation. Okay, the VGS variation will be converted to current variation ID by virtue of this transconductance. So, where the transconductance is high, so you have to pick that particular operating point. And you might be knowing the expression for the transconductance, last time we have mentioned. What was that? The expression for the transconductance was? 2 ID by VGS minus VTH. 2 ID by VGS minus VTH, another expression was? GM is given by mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH. That is another expression. Okay, so how to get this? Basically, this is obtained by taking the slope of this graph. Del ID upon del VGS. That will give you mu and C of W over L VGS minus VTH. Now, for this particular case, even if, if, I, if I follow uh, this formula, this mu and C of is a technology dependent point that's constant, WL is fixed. So, this GM can be increased if you ha have higher value of this uh, VGS minus VTH. So, VTH is also constant 0.5 volt. So, if you increase this particular value, get source voltage, <coughs> then you can have a higher GM, higher transconductance. That can also be verified from this graph because it's a parabola. So, if you take the slope over here, and if you take the slope over here, the slope is higher. It's not a straight line. So slope is not constant. Slope is higher. As you move from here to here, the slope will be higher. So you have more stronger device. So for a given VGS, you have more current variation. Okay. So what you can do 
is that I can increase the bias voltage from one threshold to say two threshold. You can make it three threshold, no problem. So if I do this, if I do this change, suppose my now the gate source, uh, now my uh, new gate source voltage is equal to input voltage, this Vm, this input voltage added with this DC part and this DC part V1 is nothing but twice VTH. This is twice VTH. So it is 1 volt. Okay. Now it is 1 volt. Now you just check. Then you have three different, uh, let me consider, yeah. So when your uh, input is zero, I mean small signal is zero, when the input is just, uh, small signal is zero, this V is equal to zero, at that point of time, suppose your current is going to be ID1, and when the input is at its peak, 5 millivolt, small signal input is 5 millivolt, then suppose the current is given by ID2. So one is ID1, the DC current, and ID2 is the peak current. Okay, so what is your ID1? If you just calculate this ID1, what is your ID1 under this new condition? So ID1 is given by half, we when see of W over L, device is in saturation, multiplied with VGS minus, VGS1 minus VTH whole square. What is that VGS1? This VGS1 is nothing but your V1. VGS1 is nothing but your V1. Right. Because when the input is 0, you can write this uh, VGS is V in plus V1. This VGS as V in plus V1. V1 is 2 VTH. Now when uh, your V is equal to 0, then VGS is equal to 2 VTH. Right. So 2 VTH minus 1 VTH. So only 1 VTH. 0.5 volt, 0.5 volt whole square. This much a microamperes, then ultimately it gives rise to 0 0.125 milliampere. 0.125 milliampere when there was no signal. Remember what is signal? Signal means there is no time heading part. Only the DC part is present. Right. When there is no signal, that means uh, you have applied only the DC, only this V1, only this particular uh, battery then your input is, I mean your uh, current is given by 1.125 milliampere, 125 microampere. That is the current. Okay. Now you apply, uh, now, you super, now you apply this uh, uh, input signal plus 5, plus minus 5 millivolt over and above this DC value. Your DC was located at uh, 1 volt, twice the threshold, and then you are applying this uh, uh, small signal over and above this. Okay. Then suppose your new current is given by New current is given by ID2. That is a new current. Okay. So what will be the expression for ID2? So ID2 is nothing but half mu and C of W over L. VGS2, new gate source voltage. Now this VGS2 contains the DC part as well as this contains DC part as well as the time varying component. What is that? That that is basically because you are considering the peak, so that will be equal to 5 millivolt only. So VGS2 is equal to 2 VTH plus 5 millivolt. Okay? So VGS2 minus VTH is how much? 1 VTH plus 5 millivolt, so 0 0.505 volt. 0 0.505 volt. Then, if you just uh, calculate, then it is coming as 0 0.127 milliampere. So under DC condition, it was 0 0.125 milliampere. And when the input is at its peak, gate source voltage is at its peak over here, then your output is, I mean the current is given by 0 0.127 milliampere. Okay. So what about the change? So the change, I mean the change from here to here, from, from, from the, uh, from the uh, input perspective, the change is from 0 to plus 5 millivolt. When the input was 0, a small signal was 0, that means you are at DC, then plus 5 millivolt, 
changes from 0.1 to 5 milliampere to 0.1 to 7 milliampere. That means from 125 microampere to 127 microampere. So, input change by 5 millivolt. This one. Input change by 5 millivolt. The current change by 2 microampere. Isn't it? So, can you now find out the expression for the resistance? What will be the new resistance value? Yes, so 0 0.002 milliampere, that is the change in the input value, in, I mean the output current, 0 0.002 milliampere or 2 microampere. And suppose you would like to have a gain of 10. Suppose. Last time you want a gain of 10. So for input 5 millivolt, the output should be at 50 millivolt. This time also I'd like to have this one as 50 millivolt. So now the resultant RT value is given by 50 millivolt by 2 microampere that is equal to 25 kilo ohms. So the requirement of the resistance value is reduced from 4 mega ohms to in the range of kilo ohms, 25 kilo ohms. It's not a magic. It's not a magic. The reason behind this reduction in the RT value is that you have changed the operating point. When you kept the operating point right over here, so basically uh, in this particular graph I have shown uh, three such uh, defined points. One at one, one is at uh, point A, that means the first case, the DC value, so that is the operating point. What is the DC value? DC gets source voltage when, when there is no AC value, a small signal. So point A, the corresponding uh, uh, your gate source voltage is zero. Point B, right at the threshold, the gate source voltage was 0 0.5 volt, one threshold only. And say point C, that is at one volt, twice the threshold. So at point A, the device is completely off. There is no question of amplification. The device is off, there is no current. Even if you apply some small signal over and above this point A, there is no current. At point B, okay, some kind might be there, even the positive off cycle, negative off cycle is off, distorted amplifier, and the requirement of resistance is that large. In order to have a gain of 10, you require a resistance value equal to 4, 4 mega ohms. It's difficult in the integrated circuit to design a resistor with value equal to 4 mega ohms. Gradually, you see that whenever we will move into the uh, small signal analysis part, small signal part, then you'll see that the Enhancement of the resistance is one of the important criteria, but that I could, I cannot do this one, or I cannot uh, achieve this one just by increasing the resistance always. That is the requirement from our side. If you can remember the expression for the voltage gain, for a simple common emitter amplifier, what was the, what was the expression? Minus GMRC. Minus GMRC. So for a given GM, suppose GM is, uh, you know that GM is fixed, or a given bias condition, GM is fixed. So. If you would like to increase the gain, if you would like to increase the gain, what was the way out? The way out is okay, you, have, you go on increasing the resistance, the last value. But that's not a good choice of this. Because as you go on increasing the RC value, the first and foremost problem that you face is that you require more, or there will be more power loss. That is not needed. That is the power loss and also the available swing. And this swing is very important over here. Right, remember you have to operate the device in the saturation. That is very important. So just by increasing the voltage, just by increasing the resistance according to your requirement, will not serve the purpose. So it sounds good that, okay, you have uh, made the resistance value, or you have made it lower from four mega ohms to 25 kilo ohms, just by putting the, uh, your operating point, point A to B, B to C. So that is our uh, point of attraction, this point C. Where you can have, so I can have uh, say three different uh, 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 say points over here, say this point, this point, this point over at the, uh, right at the, so right at the, at the origin, this is zero. Then at say uh, point V dash, where uh, you have some certain amount of uh, GM, and if you move to feet over less, the at, at point P2, then the GM value is even larger because your slope is larger. Clear? 
and you know this expression I have already written over there, del idea from del PGS, that is the expression. Now the question is that, now tell me whether, whether this circuit, now you have now to some extent you are convinced that okay, two, two threshold uh, is good enough, uh, 25 kilo ohms is the requirement of the resistance value. Now if I, if I select the V1 to be uh, two threshold, that is one volt, then to some extent you are happy that, or you are convinced that okay, uh, the requirement of RT is not that large. Somehow you will be able to design the uh, amplifier. But just tell me, just observe this circuit and tell me whether this circuit can be used as an amplifier or not. We just check whether this circuit is, can be used or not as, a, as an amplifier. Ah, so there is no drain source voltage, I am not applied any drain source voltage. What, what can you do? Can you attach any, uh, suppose, uh, can you do that? Can, can I connect a, uh, this something like that? Uh, uh, I don't have the capacity for the timing. So can I do that? No. I can't do that because if I if I make any attempt something like that, then obviously your uh, output voltage is constant. Is it like constant? There is no point, I mean uh, it cannot be changed. So this is not a good solution. Okay, so the thing is that source is grounded. Source is grounded, but you have to, and uh, source is grounded and uh, this part of the resistance is also grounded. So you have to make sure that the drain source, the point is that the drain source voltage should be greater than the overdrive voltage, so that the device remains in the saturation, right. So what, what else I can do? In the drain source, okay, the resistance should be there, RT is there. Resistance there at bicentre. Yes, so I need, I need another resist, another voltage source in the output side which will drive the, the drain source point, right. So I have to connect one resistor, one, bat oh, one battery, one uh, voltage source, rather battery, DC, DC voltage source. Okay. So this will not work, this circuit will not work, right. So I have to add one, I need to add some battery over there, so that this voltage, so if I add some battery over there, so right at right at this point, this the potential at this point is equal to ground, is equal to zero. So I have to I have to increase this potential at this particular point, and here it is zero, and this voltage should be in between. If we just follow this particular thing, if we just apply KV over there. Okay. So let's do this one. Let's add another battery. Let's add another battery. So for the timing, gradually you'll see that only one one uh, one supply line will be will be good enough. You have only one supply, VDD, from where you are taking all those connections. So for the timing, let's have two different sources, two different uh, DC battery. One is V1 for for the biasing at the input side, and second one is V2 for biasing at the output side. Right. The condition is that you have to expect that. My new, so this is my new drain potential over here. So this drain potential should be greater than the gate potential minus the threshold, keeping the, because the source is grounded only. Okay. So what is that? What what is this V2 then? So now you can apply uh, KVL in the output side. V2 is equal to the voltage drop across the resistance RD VR. I can call it VR plus VDS, the drain source voltage. From here to here, from here to here, you have drain source and this is the VR, VRD or VR. Okay, so what is this VR? VR is nothing but IDRD into VDS. Okay, so IDRD into v, IDRD plus VDS, that is your, uh, the V2 value. And accordingly, you have to select the value of V2. What should be my V2 value? What is the condition? The condition is that, the stringent condition is that, whenever the gate source is maximum, I have to compare now this overdrive with the drain source. So the minimum value of the drain source should be greater than the highest value of the voltage. Minimum of threshold and minimum of this drain source should be greater than the highest of the 
overdrive. So what is the highest overdrive you can expect over here? The highest overdrive can be obtained when this is constant, V1 is constant to threshold value, to, 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 to 2 VTH, so that is 1 volt. When the V is at its peak, that is the highest uh, water you can expect. So, to uh, V1 plus V in minus VTH, that is the water expression. V1 plus V minus VGS minus VTH. So, what is VGS? V1 plus V in minus VTH. That is the water What is the maximum of that? V1 plus V in max minus VTH. So, V1 minus VTH is equal to your one threshold. So, the maximum of your overdrive is given by how much? 1 threshold plus 5 millivolt, that is 0.505 volt, 505 millivolt. Okay, that is the, that is the peak gate source. And that has to be equal to the mean of VDS. If this is true, then you can expect that the device will be there in the saturation because that is the most stringent condition. VDS minimum should be equal to or greater than overdrive maximum. Then you are sure, you are pretty sure that for the entire region of operation, because remember now we are not dealing only at a particular voltage, rather we are we are considering the variation of this input signal. You have to make sure that the for the entire region of the operation, whenever the input varies something like that, something like that, for the entire region, your device will be there in the saturation region. So, VTS minimum is given by 0 0.505 volt. Okay. So, now let us calculate what should be the requirement of V2. That is well known. V1 is equal to VTH. So, V2 is equal to VR plus VDS, that is ITRT plus VDS, right? And what is the expression for IT? Half mean C ox W over L, VGS minus VT is whole square into RT plus VDS. So, what is the minimum of V2? Minimum of V2 is nothing but this value plus minimum of VDS, and minimum of VDS we have already calculated to be 0 0.505 volt. Now, if you just plug in these values, VGS, because this VDS minimum, sorry, this VGS, VDS minimum is nothing but VGS minus VTH maximum, overdrive maximum. Overdrive maximum is equal to the VTS minimum, so that the device will be there in the saturation, all the time, right. So, that value is equal to 0 0.505 volt. So, now if you just uh, simple substitute those values, it is coming out to be half and all these things and let us assume some value for RT now. Let us assume that RT is equal to 1 kilo ohms for example, then it is coming out to be, the V2 is coming out to be 0 0.632 volt. So, whenever you are biasing in the output side, you have to make sure that for a given, obviously it is a function of RT. So, even if you are, so when your RT is equal to 1 kilo ohms, then because ultimately depending on the value of RT, the drop will also be determined. The drop, I mean the drain source voltage is nothing but the supply V2 minus the drop across RT. So, obviously the uh, requirement of your uh, minimum V2 is a function of RT also. So, let us have a fixed RT. Let us consider the RT to be 1 kilo ohms. So, for this, uh, your uh, V2 minimum is given by 0 0.632 volt. It is not that, that you can take any arbitrary value of V2 and you, uh, you expect the device to operate in the saturation region for the entire region of the operation. It is not just possible. So, that is the mechanism, how to ensure that, okay, that now the device, now now if you consider, now if you consider this com this uh, compound circuit, something like that, now you are sure that if my V1 is equal to VTH, and for this case, if RT is equal to 1 kilo ohms, and if V2 is equal to 0 0.632 volt, then the device can be operated as, as a, or can be used as an amplifier for the entire region of the operation. So, let us consider V1 is equal to 1 volt, V2 is equal to 1 volt, now it will work. Both of them 1 volt, V1 1 volt, V2 1 volt, and your threshold voltage is 0 0.5 volt. Now it will work. But if you take V1 say 1 volt and V2 say 0 0.5 volt, then it will never work. The device will move into the uh, trial region. That you do not want. Okay. Relatively, this biasing is easier as compared to the BJT biasing. But remember, one thing is very important that you need to bias the device. 
until unless you bias the device, then obviously uh, your circuit will not work as an anti -connect. Any doubt up to this? Next, we will move to the small signal part, small signal analysis. Depending on the your requirement, in the range of kilo ohms, in the range of kilo ohms, but remember, uh, here we, although for, for the time being, uh, since it's an introductory class regarding this biasing and amplification, so that's why I have used this resistance as a resistance RT. And gradually you'll see that these resistances are also used, uh, are implemented by means of some MOS devices in different com configurations, different topology. Try, try. Different topology. Yeah. Because our ultimate objective is to increase the gain. There are so, so many requirements as far as the amplification is concerned. For an amplifier, you know that there are different parameters. One is the gain. Gain is important. I would like to increase the gain. At the same time, the stability has to be increased. The gain should not be a function of temperature and other parameters. Right? Power requirement should be minimum. Power consumption should be minimum. The voltage swing should be maximum. Right? What do you mean by voltage swing over here? Yes, if I consider the source is at ground, source is at ground, then the range for which the drain, I mean, in this particular case, I have used the source uh, ground, source is at ground potential, right? Now, obviously, the drain potential cannot be anything. You know that there is a particular bound on the drain potential. It cannot be lower than a particular value. Because if it is a lower than a particular value, then there is a chance that the device might enter into the trap. That you don't want. If the drain is higher than a particular level, then the device will be there in the saturation. So that, that change, that range over which I can use this particular, uh, this particular configuration as an amplifier. Saturation region and bound time. Saturation region and bound time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for, a, for a good amplifier, I always expect that this range over which uh, this circuit will uh, operate faithfully, this swing, this swing should be large enough. That is another requirement from the uh, amplifier's perspective. So one is, so gain is not all. Gain is obviously one of the important parameters for an amplifier, but not all. Apart from the stability is there, power consumption is there, voltage swing is there, and then obviously the impedances are there. For the BJT case, you have seen that this input impedance, output impedance, they are playing an important role. You got a role over there. Thankfully for MOS, if you operate like this, the input side, for the input side, you, you should not bother. Why? Because uh, from gate to source, there is a there is a there is an insulator, so it's infinite resistance, at least for the zero frequency. If you consider some small frequency, I mean the, uh, your mm, say a, a few hertz of frequency, then obviously some uh, capacitors effect will be there, and then you have some uh, impedance. Considering the corresponding value of the a capacitor. But at least for zero frequency, your uh, this uh, impedance at part is equal to infinite. That's good. But what about the output impedance? You have to calculate the output impedance. This is not equal to zero. Ideally, input for, for a voltage amplifier, you expect that your input impedance should be infinite, output impedance should be zero. For, for the MOS case, the input side is good, but for the output side, it is not equal to zero. So accordingly, you have to you have to select amongst different size topology. And here also you can have the notion of buffer. You have uh, studied buffer in uh, BJT course. Buffer, common collector. Here also you have another buffer. Voltage buffer you have. So these are the different parameters uh, with which we have to deal. Not only the, uh, I mean, uh, not always your, uh, the gain is important. Yeah, gain is important, but apart from that, there are so many other parameters. And accordingly, uh, the, the type of register that you select Sometimes if you will not select the register as a register, sometimes if you use the current source as, as a load, you will gradually see. You will use current source as a load. Sometimes you will use the direct connected load as a load. What is direct connected load? So MOS will be used as a two terminal device. I have not used it yet, the direct connected device. That means typically MOS is having three terminals, yet source and drain. You will see that 
for direct market device, you would get and drain that shortage. Now, if get and drain that shortage, it becomes the ultimate, it's a two term device. Right. And accordingly, if get and drain that shortage, what will be the uh, what is the status of the uh, device? Always saturation. Always saturation. Right? You have some resistance over there, some impedance over there, some resistance over there. So that direct connected device can also be used as a, as a, as a load. For some applications, we will use that. For some applications, we will use the MOS, I mean MOS in the saturation region as a current source. There are so many. So we we'll discuss all these different aspects in our subsequent classes.